Good morning, Washington. How you doing, everybody? It's the 15th of February, 2012. This is what happens when you go to the Washington Post website and an ad comes up and you click on close the ad. You get black. That's what you get. And the back arrow, the front arrow doesn't work. You're stuck on it. This is that great website. I've also been noticing that the Washington Post's wonderful website has also been um, slow to load of, as late. You know, late. late. Uh, you go to uh, Eric Weppel's wonderful, fascinating media blog, and it, you just sit and wait 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 for the page to load. Here, I don't get this. I don't get this. This drives me crazy. This drives me crazy. This is the Washington Post today. They run an obit. Okay, look at that. For a guy named Wilmot Perkins, he's a Jamaican radio host. Wilmot Perkins, 80, a veteran Jamaican journalist and radio host, uh, considered the island's godfather of talk radio, died February 10th at his home in Kingston. Okay, fine. I have no problem with that. You know, you know. But the thing that pu puzzles me is that Jamal Muhammad, a prestigious DJ over there on WPFW, the, the um, historian of jazz on the station for three decades, he died on February 4th. He's a local guy on a local radio station, okay, with a local following. And the post still hasn't run his obit. Nothing. If you go to the Washington Post website and you, you, uh, you know, search for Jamal Muhammad, you will get a link to a jazz blog, which has a you know little remembrance of him, the same one that we put, I think capitalbob.com, capitalbop.com, that we put up on DCRTV. But there's still no obit in the post. Now, why does the post run an obit for a Jamaican DJ who probably nobody, I mean, I can't imagine too many people in the Washington market knowing who this guy is. Uh, and Jamal, nothing. Still nothing. I, you know, I imagine someday, maybe in March, <laughs> an obit will pop up. But some, sometimes the post, you just sit there and go, this isn't rocket science. This is journalism. And one thing about journalism is that it needs to be somewhat, somewhat timely. I don't know. Listen to WMAL this morning, man. I can't listen. I got the junkies on now. I can't listen to WMAL anymore. It's, it's, it is just mind-numbingly stupid. You know, poor old, poor old Brian Wilson. I, you know, the guy was a Channel 5 reporter, a good one, too. He went to Fox News, and he was a good reporter at Fox News. Now, I don't know, man. He just sounds like a dope on WMAL. He just, ah. Uh. You know, here's what here's what I here's what really makes me mad about some of this talk radio, and I, I know, I'm not saying righties and lefties, either, you know, they both do it, but you pick out one stupid thing, so you, you know, some story across the country. There's a school in North Carolina where some kid brought in a chicken nuggets and didn't have a vegetable or a fruit with her chicken nuggets and the school officials made a big fuss about it and confiscated her lunch and gave her something else to eat and and now you know the talk radio world is ranting and raging about this one stupid incident in one little school as if it's some giant obama conspiracy to you know uh, upstage parents and not allow parents to bring in uh, you know, let their kids bring lunch, their lunch of choice to school. You know, that giant conspiracy, and they're screaming and ranting and yelling about this. And I'm listening to WMAL this morning, and there's callers on WMAL who claim, you know, the, again, the Nazi thing with Obama. I know they don't like Obama over there on WMAL, and that's fine. You know, they have the right to do that and all that, and they have the right to criticize him. But, but to gin up from one dumb little thing in North Carolina, which I think most liberals would probably agree is ridiculous, too. And and to gin that up into this giant hysterical uh, thing, you, know, you see that all the time. What Find one find one thing where a teacher does something stupid in Colorado to a student, and then you, you scream and yell about all the liberal teachers' unions and how they're all rotten and how Obama's behind it and how... It's just like, you know, it, it, I really get tired of radio like that. I realize MAL's ratings aren't so good and they're trying to gin things up and get people all riled up. I realize that. But it really is disingenuous. And folks like Brian Wilson should be ashamed of the crap they're – do they go – when the heat gets off the air at 9 o'clock, does he sit down and go, 
Man, our show was a ball of crap this morning. It's sad to see somebody like Wilson, who is who is a really good journalist, I thought. Stupid to this crap. Anyhow. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. I don't have my camos on today. What am I going to do? Uh, what, what do I want to do? Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I had to run out of the room there because I forgot to put this... <laughs> One of my friends gave me this the other day. This is weird. Everybody remember this magazine? It's called Film Threat. This is wild. This is wild. I, I remember I remember seeing this years ago, and it's just wild to uh, look through this thing. And uh, remember, remember Lance Henriksen there? Lance Henriksen. <laughs> Lancelot. <laughs> this is absolutely wonderful. Kind of a uh, bizarre take on celebrity dumb and cult cinema and stuff like that. <laughs> the Chippendoodles. A bunch of little kids dressed up like the Chippendales. <laughs> well, that's sick. <laughs> uh, this is cool. Uh, I, I love stuff like this. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, we're hearing rumblings over at CBS that their top chief engineer dude is out. They still working for CBS, but apparently they're looking to. You know, problem that CBS has in the Washington market is they got a lot of signals that just aren't that great. You know, CBS has two FMers, 94.7 and 95.5, that are pretty good signals. Okay, uh, both are inside the Beltway. They give good coverage of the area, but all of the rest of CBS's signals are some way substandard. JFK is out there in you know Northern Virginia. It doesn't cover the Northeast suburbs well. 106.7. Um, and, of course, 99.1 being in Anne Arundel County, and they're trying to go up against WTOP, which has got great signals with all news. That's going to be a problem. And, of course, El Zal there at 107.9 in Annapolis, which is bounces up against 107.7 in Northern Virginia and doesn't cover, you know, El Zal is hurt in the ratings because of uh, that signal move. You know, so CBS has some problems, and I guess they can get better engineers if they, you know, or, or different engineers or whatever to help tweak the signals, but, you know, you can't really move. The FCC won't allow you to move the signals. Let's just take 107.9 and move it into Washington. <laughs> uh -uh. FCC says, no, 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 no. There's a whole lot of funny technical graphs and, and things like that. <laughs> oh, okay, folks. Uh, so anyhow, there, I I'm, I'm, feel better now that I ran it. Um, so there, Mike O'Mara is planning a live show Saturday, March 31st at the State Theater in Falls Church. You know, Mike does his podcast from his home in Manassas at MikeOmeraShow.com. So if you want to go see Mike live March 31st at the State Theater in Falls Church, uh, check out MikeOmeraShow.com for tickets and we're gonna uh, gonna have, of course, Buzz Burbank, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana, and an Elvis impersonator. Ooh! <laughs> oy, 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 oy. All right, folks. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching Dave TV. Um, there was something else I was gonna talk about, but I can't remember. So. Yeah.